In this video, we're going to work a problem where we're given this function, the function 1 over x, and we want to start by finding the second degree Taylor polynomial of, of the function centered at 1. Once we have that polynomial, then we're going to use Taylor's inequality to get an estimate for the maximum possible error that results from using the Taylor polynomial as an estimate for the function. Assuming that we're restricting the, the allowable values of x that could be input into the Taylor polynomial to be within this range. Then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to graph the actual error value between the function and the Taylor polynomial by just graphing 1 over x minus the Taylor polynomial, the absolute value of that, and compare the maximum possible error that that shows over this interval to the error value we calculated using Taylor's inequality. All right, so we've got f of x is 1 over x. Let's start by finding the second degree Taylor polynomial centered at 1 of 1 over x. And so remember, in here, so we want to get t sub 2 of x. This doesn't necessarily mean we're summing the first two terms of the Taylor series of 1 over x centered at, centered at 1. It can mean that, but that, that's not, it doesn't always mean that. What this means every single time, the, the exact meaning of this, is that the Taylor polynomial is going to go up to the x squared term. This is telling you the order of the Taylor polynomial. Okay, so we're going to go through the same process as if we were constructing the full Taylor series of 1 over x. So we have two columns, and on the left here, we're going to be taking derivatives of the function. So we start with the zeroth derivative, which is just the function. So this is x to the minus 1. Then f prime of x is minus x to the minus 2 power, so kf double prime of x is positive 2x to the minus 2 minus 1, okay. Okay, now the second derivative should get us to the x squared term, but we want to go one past one derivative past what we need for the Taylor polynomial because that's going to come into play with Taylor's inequality. So minus 6x to the minus 4 Okay, now let's come to the right column. We're going to plug the center point in into each of these. So f of 1 is 1 f prime of 1 is minus 1. Okay. Okay. So we've got f of 1 is 1. f prime of 1 is minus 1. Okay, so now if, if we were constructing the actual Taylor series, we would start to look for patterns. If we couldn't see a pattern here, we'd divide by n factorial and see if we could see a pattern, but there's no need to look for patterns because the Taylor polynomial, we're just going to sum this term, this term, and this term. This will get us all the way to x squared, which is, that's what, where we want to stop. So, okay, this is going to be, this term is going to be, so, you know, the coefficients in the Taylor series are, you know, c sub n, as we know, is the nth derivative centered at a over n factorial. Here's the nth derivatives centered at a, so now dividing by n factorial, this is, so divided by 0 factorial is just 1, divided by 1 factorial is just minus 1, and then this divided by 2 factorial is 1. So the function 1 over x, which we're going to approximate 
by t sub 2 of x is equal to, so this is 1 times x minus a to the 0 power, so this is just 1, and then we've got minus 1 times x minus a to the 1 power, so this is just minus x, and then we're centered at 1, so x minus 1, okay? And now plus, now here's the coefficient, and then x minus a squared. And we can simplify this, so 1 minus x plus 1, and maybe we could, let's actually expand this, why not? So x squared minus x minus x, okay, so x squared minus 1x minus 2x is minus 3x, and then 1 plus 1 plus 3. So there is t sub 2 of x, and that's what we're using to approximate 1 over x. Okay, so again, this is an approximation for the value of 1 over x. If we, if we plug in a value of x that's near 1, if we plug that in here, it's going to give us a value that's close to to if we actually plug that in to the function itself. That's what this is. Okay, now we want to think about if if we're going to plug in an, an x value within this range. So it's this is like some radius about the value 1. So we're going to go plug in an x from 0.7 to 1.3. If we plug in any value in that range, what's the worst possible error we can get using this t sub 2 here? So no matter what x value we plug in, we're going to be, at worst, off by how much? Well, to do this, we, we're going to use Taylor's inequality. So what, what Taylor's inequality is all about is we know that we could, if we, 1 over x, we could actually, if, if we use the full Taylor series, so not t sub 2, but just t, then it would be equal to that, right? They would be equal. It's not approximate. They're, they would be equal. And But what is the difference between t sub t of, or t of x and t sub 2 of x or t sub n of x? One is, the, th this is the infinite series, but the t sub n is a, is a partial sum. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find how accurate a certain partial sum is relative to the infinite sum. Well, that's what r sub n is all about. That's what we spent the first half of the chapter dealing with, you know, how accurate is a, is a partial sum, right? We had the infinite sum S is equal to S sub N plus R sub N. Well, here with Taylor polynomials, we're thinking about T of X is equal to T sub N of X plus R sub N of X. If once we pick a value of N, then how large is the remainder? So it's, it's the the, the infinite sum portion that we didn't include in the sum, which is the error from the actual function, right? How, how, how could we want to see, get an estimate for how large R sub n is? Just like we did with, with in the first half of the chapter, that's what we're doing here. Well, that's what Taylor's inequality is all about. It's going to give us a ceiling for the, for the magnitude of, of R sub n. Okay, so with, with Taylor's inequality, we're trying to get this here. Now, if you notice, we, we already know what n is. We chose n. And we already know what a is. We chose a as well. So to, to, in order to get this inequality, all we need is capital M. Taylor's inequality is all about capital M. We need to find out what capital M is. Okay, now capital M is given by this. This is how we get capital M. We need the n plus 1 derivative of the function, Take the absolute value of that, and then for any all x values, or for the case where maybe you, you you're restricting the x values to a certain range. In in this case, we're, we're we're restricting it to a certain range. The the d in this case is looks like that would be what 0.3. The d is 0.3 in this case. What what's capital M? You might not have a d. Maybe you just it's going off to infinity. It's for any x. 
then is there, there still might be a capital M. It might be a function of D, maybe. Okay. Now, what, so what's the N plus 1th derivative? Okay. Well, there's the third derivative. It's minus 6 over X to the 4th. Okay. So F triple prime of X is minus 6 over X to the 4th. Okay. What is the, that's the N plus 1th derivative. What is the absolute value of this? Well, that's going to be 6 over x to the 4th. Okay, now, for a certain range of x values, or a certain distance around the center point, if we can pick any x value, in this case, it, here's the range. Any, we can pick any x value from 0.7 to 1.3. So we can go any distance up to 0.3 away from the center. Is there a certain value that is greater than or equal to all other values. Now, we're talking about a certain value on this, this function here, on the absolute value of the third derivative. So let's, let's bring in a plot of this, 6 over x to the fourth. Okay, so here's 6 over x to the fourth. As you get closer to zero, it, it really shoots up, the value shoots up. So we're going from about, you know, 0.7 to, to 1.3. Well, yeah, at 0.7, the third derivative of our function, the, taking the absolute value of that function, of the third derivative, if you plug in 0.7, then what you get, that value is, well, is greater than or equal to any other value you would get if you plugged in absolutely anything else in this range. Okay, so that's it. This is less than or equal to so 6 divided by... 0.7 to the fourth, 24.9896. For the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.3, which is that that's the criteria we were given. Okay, so now we've got capital M. Now we, we've got our ceiling on the absolute value of r sub n of x. So the absolute value of, we want r sub 2 of x, right? When it comes to the, the Taylor polynomial approximation, it, it's the same idea. It's t of x is equal to, in this case, we have t sub 2 of x. So what we're trying to find is, it, is an estimate on the size of r sub 2 of x. So that's what, that's what we have here. R sub 2, the absolute value of, the R, of R sub 2 of X is less than or equal to, we, we plug 2 in here, N is equal to 2. That's what this M is based on. So we got what we need. 2 plus 1 factorial. And then X minus 1 to the n plus 1 is 3. So this is equal to 3 factorial is 6. Okay, divided by 6, 4.16493. Okay, so there it is. There is the upper bound on R sub 2 of X. But what we're going to do now is we want to effectively plug any of these X values in to this inequality that will, that will make this the largest value possible. You might say, well, don't we have to plug in 0.7 because we used 0.7 earlier? No, th this is something different. That was just to get capital M. W once we answered the question of what capital M was, then we, we were done with capital M. Now, and with, once we chose capital M, here it is. Here's the, here's the inequality, and it's dependent on the X we choose.
within this range. So with this inequality, what's the worst case scenario X? Because that will turn this into a number and officially answer the question of what is the, the, a, a single number for the upper bound on R sub 2 of X. So what's the largest that if we want to make this magnitude the largest, what should we plug in? Well, either 0.7 or 1.3. We're going to get it, minus 0.3 is the, is the farthest we can be from the center point. So 0.7 is, is 0.3 below the center point. 1.3 is 0.3 above, but we're taking the absolute value anyway. So what we've got is 0.3 cubed times 0.112453. Okay, so and there it is. There is the upper bound on the accuracy of this Taylor polynomial approximating this the function 1 over x now you might be wondering well wait why didn't we isn't this r sub 2 of we plugged in 0 0.3 no 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 this is a, a function of x this is the question was what is the so you, you could you could put any value of x between 0.7 and 1.3 into this r sub 2 function right if we come here, you could you plug t you plug x any x between 0.7 and 1.3 in in here, and that's going to create a certain r sub two value, right? This this remainder theorem is based on the, the the value of n and the value of x. This is saying that no matter what x you plug in here, as long as it's between 0.7 and 1.3, including the endpoints. The absolute value of that is no matter what, there's, no matter what x you put in, it's going to be less than or equal to this. This is the, the question we wanted to answer. We've answered the question. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to graph r sub 2 of x, the absolute value of r sub 2 of x. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we know that, so... This is equal to the absolute value of the function minus t sub 2. Right? Because Well, t, t of x, that's the function. We, we chose n is equal to 2. So r sub 2 of x is equal to just the function minus t sub 2 of x. Take the absolute value of both sides. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Then why wouldn't we just calculate the exact value? You know, we could just have used the... The, this we could have found r sub 2 of x exactly. What was the point of Taylor's inequality? All we're doing is we're practicing the mechanics of Taylor's inequality. It just might be the case where maybe you can't find, you aren't able to graph, actually graph the r sub n of x for some reason, or maybe it's difficult to graph it. There could be different reasons why. Okay, here is the absolute value of r sub 2 of x. This here. Just plug this, uh, I said absolute value, and then I plug this in. Okay, so here's about 0 0.7. And then 1.3 is about here. So the worst possible, the largest that r sub 2 of x can be is like less than 0 0.04. So like again, so this was, this was an estimate. Right, Taylor's inequality gave us an estimate. This is the exact plot of r sub 2 of x. So we got 0.112, and then the actual ceiling was 0.03. So it gives you a sense for what Taylor's inequality is, is giving us.